A birthday was celebrated in San Francisco today, marking an event 50 years ago whose impact is still unmeasured. It was the invention of television. Terry Drinkwater reports. 50 years ago today, in a loft of this old San Francisco building, electronic television was born. 21-year-old Philo T. Farnsworth transmitted a single line of light on a system he dreamed up in high school. That historic experiment recreated here by some of his early associates. The light bounced into a crude camera and transmitted across the room. The idea of television was not new even in 1927, but Farnsworth was the first to demonstrate that the pictures could be broken down into electrical impulses. The next step was to assemble many lines of light into pictures, these snapshots off the screen from the early transmissions. And from there, motion, films. Farnsworth figured out a way to transmit the first Mickey Mouse cartoon, Steamboat Willie, from his laboratory to his house. His son, Philo T. Farnsworth III, watched a lot of Mickey. Uh, yes, we had a TV at home. A lot of the engineers' kids did. And we, 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 there was an experimental uh, broadcast uh, program uh, going on most of the time. And uh, so we were indeed the video kids, the first video kids. Mr. Philo T. Farnsworth, shown at the right, is working on the image dissector tube. By the mid-1930s, as this theater newsreel noted, the state of the art was progressing. It may not be long before our news events and current world happenings will be witnessed in thousands of homes. But World War II held up development of television, and it wasn't until the late 1940s that home receivers like these began coming off the assembly lines. As far as we know, Farnsworth himself appeared on commercial television only once, on I've Got a Secret in 1957. Is this some kind of a machine that might be painful when it's used? Uh, yeah, sometimes it's most painful. <laughs> Farnsworth died in 1971. This morning, his family and some of those who worked in the labs with him gathered in a museum near San Francisco to commemorate the day a half century ago when he first sent electronic pictures through the air. His widow recalled the first time he put her on TV, the lights were so bright she closed her eyes. And she also recalled how discouraged he was sometimes in his later years that his invention was not being constructively used. He made the statement several times that um, uh, he thought he'd maybe wasted his time because of the programming. But uh, then when uh, we saw the, the first man on the moon, he just changed his mind. <laughs> he thought it was all worthwhile. Farnsworth died two years after the lunar landing. He had seen the lines of light from his early laboratory go to the moon and back to Earth. Terry Drinkwater, CBS News, Los Altos, California. That's the news this Wednesday night. I'm Roger Mudd, CBS News. Good night. It was exactly 50 years ago today, September 7th, 1927, when a young electronics genius named Philo T. Farnsworth II startled the world with something called television. In a small San Francisco laboratory at the foot of Telegraph Hill, Farnsworth transmitted the first completely electronic television picture. Today, to celebrate the golden anniversary of television, Farnsworth's son, Philo T. Farnsworth III, gathered together some of his late father's associates to reenact the birth of TV. To do it, they reconstructed Farnsworth's original equipment, including this old image dissector tube, the original television camera. It took light images and transformed them into electronic impulses. These impulses were transmitted to a picture tube where they were converted back into light images. In other words, a TV picture. The original picture was no more than a straight line, but it was a picture. A picture that signaled the beginning of the most powerful mass communications medium in the history of man. According to his son, Farnsworth conceived the idea of electronic television transmission when he was a young boy working on a farm. It was the summer of 1920. He was just turning 14. He was uh, spent the summer plowing uh, crops, uh, uh, dealing with crops and rows, and the idea of using a pencil beam of electrons to create rows and thus a field occurred to him. This also was about the time that he, uh, the, the basic idea for the image dissector camera tube came to him. Farnsworth died in 1971, but lived long enough to see his invention surpass baseball and everything else 
as our greatest national pastime. Say, kids, what time is it? When I look out across the nation, what a thrill, what a sensation, cause I see you and I see that you're seeing me. Wowie, howdy doody, across the country, time to join me in a fun spree, cause I see you and I see that you're seeing me. It cost Philo T. Farnsworth about $25,000 to make that first all-electronic television transmission back in 1927. Now, 50 years later, television has swept across the world, even up to the moon and Mars. But bringing things back down to Earth again, if it wasn't for Philo T. Farnsworth and his colleagues, right now, you'd only be hearing my voice. I'm Jeff Simon in Four Country. I'm glad none of us would have a job either. Indi we should all be singing happy birthday right now if we feel that way about television because today is television's 50th birthday. Very little known inventor is the one who did it and he did it in his garage right here in the Bay Area. He invented the first television transmission. You've seen Cynthia Perry tells us all about our golden anniversary. Philo Farnsworth was an Idaho farm boy. He never even saw electricity till he was 11 years old. But two years later, in his high school science class, he sketched out on the blackboard a device that was to become television. His teacher said it would work. Eight years later, he brought that drawing to life in a garage in San Francisco. The very first television looked just like this. The first picture was a beam of light. Philo died six years ago, almost totally unknown. His two lab assistants, Cliff Gardner and Toby Rutherford, are still alive. They built this replica of Philo's TV at Foothill College in Los Altos Hills. They did it to help Philo's wife, Pam, who's decided that she wants the world to know who invented TV. She says that RCA tried to claim the credit. In the court battles over the patents, Philo's old high school teacher was found and was able to draw from memory the sketch that Philo had shown him. So Philo won the suit, but still never really made much money from his invention. As TV progressed over the years, Philo became more and more disappointed at the way things were turning out. Charlie's Angels just wasn't what he had in mind. And from the first, uh, he used to talk about uh, that it would be such a wonderful educational tool. And uh, he would, uh, uh, that it would help us get into space. And, and he saw us talking and uh, receiving pictures from uh, other countries across the sea. And that we possibly could then understand them better and uh, uh, maybe avoid going to war so much. And he had a lot, of, he, he foresaw it pretty well. Well, in 50 years, we've come from Philo's little box of light to all this that you see here, and a technology that's changing so fast that even the people in the TV industry can't keep up with it. In San Francisco, this is Cynthia Perry, Channel 7 News Scene. Well, you can see a replica of Philo Farnsworth's invention on display in the Electronics Museum down at Foothill College on the peninsula, if you'd like to drop by there sometime. Today is the 50th anniversary of an event that helped make this program possible. In fact, without it, I'd still be back at my old job at KCBS News Radio. And Walter Cronkite and Eric Severide would still be with CBS Radio 2 exclusively, and many others. What happened? Well, Tim Finley has the story. On September 7th, 1927, in this unlikely warehouse at the base of Telegraph Hill, a 21-year-old young man with the unlikely name of Philo T. Farnsworth created what many say was the most important invention of the 20th century. You're watching it right now, television. It happened in this second floor laboratory, an accomplishment that might seem almost primitive today. A single line sent from a camera to a receiver, but from that moment on, the world would never be the same. What Farnsworth had accomplished through the use of an electronic dissector tube was the most important breakthrough in the development of television begun over half century earlier. It opened the way for non-mechanical scanning of images. Yet Farnsworth, the boy inventor, never received the wide credit that he deserved. There was a Bell telephone, there was an Edison light. Why was there never a Farnsworth television? Do you think? I think maybe, basically, uh, because uh, Phil wasn't one to toot his own horn, and he, he just, uh, he, he wanted to um, just be a little left alone to do his uh, research. And uh, he was made too much of a goldfish in a bowl uh, for too many years, and he just wanted out of it. 
Farnsworth widow, Pim, and their son, Philo, have been working for years to win that recognition. In the back of their Cadillac is crammed records and notes, photographs and documents for anyone who will listen. Today, on this golden anniversary of Farnsworth's achievement, a group of aging men and women stood before the original equipment and welcomed the opening of a permanent Farnsworth exhibit at Foothill College in Los Altos. They had been hardly more than kids those years ago when television was born. We never expected it to get where it is or the networks to be kept the way they are. And also now with this, don't forget, we had no idea of satellites. <laughs> Philo Farnsworth was a shy genius. He never became truly wealthy for his inventions. He died in 1971, still largely unrecognized for his work. Yet he himself was not a man to linger in the past. He left the television to the people who were engineering it and uh, got into bigger things. And he was into fusion and he just didn't have time to worry about it, really. He said, uh, historians will take care of who did what and uh, I'm, uh, my life is in the future, I can't worry about the past. It began in this Green Street warehouse that today houses a pharmaceutical firm. And in 50 years, it has swept even beyond the vision of Philo Farnsworth. In San Francisco, Tim Finley, Channel 5 Eyewitness News. Tim tells us that although Farnsworth's idea did leap beyond his wildest dreams, the inventor was disappointed in the way it developed. His friends say that he saw it as a great educational tool, not the tremendous entertainment marvel that exploded into our homes around the world. The growth of television since that fateful day 50 years ago has indeed been phenomenal. Farnsworth's success with his image dissector tube touched off a television technology explosion. By the end of the 1920s, experiments in TV were taking place here in America and in England. In 1928, a man named William Paley took over a network of radio stations, renamed it the Columbia Broadcasting System, and began looking closely at that new field of television. By 1937, 17 experimental TV stations were operating in the United States. For the most part, the pictures they sent were seen only for electronic experimenters. By 1937, 17 experimental TV stations were operating. In 1939, maybe a surprise, the first president, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, was seen on television. And what a trend that started. <laughs> it was also during that year, the first live sports event, a Major League Baseball game was broadcast. <laughs> Again, no one saw it. It wasn't until after World War II, when television standards had been set, that the public was given a seven-inch magic eye to watch. In 1949, there were one million sets. Today, there are more than 120 million. Color television began in the 40s, but it wasn't until the 60s that the NBC Peacock came into our living rooms. In the past 50 years, television has changed a lot, not only in what you see at home, but what's happening behind the scenes to make it all possible. At first, programs were broadcast from studios like the one we're in right here, with big, heavy cameras and lots of lights, much like this news broadcast. But it was impossible to go outside of the studio then came those remote trucks, buses filled with electronic gear, connected to the studios by special telephone lines. What a contrast to today's tiny instant eye camera. That little camera can take you just about anywhere and show you what's happening while it's happening, as you're seeing it happen right here. The night that Mount Diablo was on fire, you saw that story as it happened. You watched the story develop. Instead of a big bus, a van is a miniature television station complete with transmitter beaming back to KPIX pictures and sound in color. Something even beyond the wildest imagination of the imaginative Philo T. Farnsworth, the man who invented the cathode ray tube in a loft on Green Street right here in San Francisco 50 years ago today. Joel Bartlett is out there with our instant eye and he's getting a clear look at our weather. There Philo T. Farnsworth, who died in 1971, is credited by many with inventing television. In fact, it was 50 years ago today that he produced what is being called the world's first transmission of an electronic TV picture. The problem is that hardly anyone has ever heard of Farnsworth, and besides that, some people claim it was really an RCA inventor who came up with the first TV picture anyway. But Philo Farnsworth's widow and son insist their family deserves the credit. They say the government granted them most of the early patents, and they're determined to put an end to Philo Farnsworth's anonymity. With that in mind, a big ceremony was held today at Foothill College, complete with an authentic recreation of the television transmission that made history 50 years ago today. 
with an image being beamed by way of a primitive camera to a small four-inch screen a few feet away. After the festivities, we talked to widow Pem Farnsworth about her late husband's invention and about his distinct lack of fame. He would never say much about it, but, and he didn't like living in a goldfish bowl, which he did for years. So he just got out of the, uh, circulation, and then he didn't want to talk about the work he was doing, so uh, that's what he, the way he wanted it. He said his, historians would take care of it. Fifty years later, what do you think of television today? Uh, well, I think it's great. I think that uh, I don't like the, uh, the sex and violence that we show our children uh, uh, at all, and he didn't either. But uh, that's, uh, I guess if that's what the public wants, that's what they'll get. Pem Farnsworth, of course, would appreciate it very much if from now on you won't answer who when the name Philo T. Farnsworth comes up. At Foothill College in Los Altos Hills, this is Peter Lewin for News 11. That is a TS-630, one of the first television sets ever sold to the American public in the 40s, made by RCA. It's a 10-inch screen, black and white, sold for $495, and now a museum piece. Only 30 years old, but a true antique, because the basic idea of it appeared 50 years ago today, as reported by Jack Perkins. ...here today to honor Philo T. Farnsworth. Parenthesis. Some hearing this may think that what follows is farce, the name to them sounding farcical, but it's not farce, it's history. End parenthesis. Philo T. Farnsworth was an Idaho farm boy turned inventor, a young man with an ingenious mind who could foresee what tremendous effects it would have on humankind to be able to transmit a picture from one place to another. In other words, he foresaw television. Well, many people were working on that, but ultimately it was his invention that showed the way. And it happened 50 years ago today, when he was 21 years old. Well, Farnsworth is dead now, but this morning, his family, former colleagues, friends, gathered to try to reenact the historic moment with replicas of some of his original equipment, with a single line of light being beamed into an electronic dissecting tube, and from another tube, a cathode ray tube, the simple image, the straight line, being hazily reproduced. The world's first all-electronic transmission of television, 50 years ago today. Yet in those 50 years, as television grew, the name Philo Farnsworth was mostly forgotten. His widow hoped today's little ceremony might finally set the record straight. As it is now, school children in this country are taught who invented the cotton gin, but not who invented television. And the Farnsworth family doesn't think that's right. After all, no one sits around his living room for eight hours a day watching a cotton gin. Jack Perkins, NBC News, Foothill College, California.